What it do, bruh? Talk of the town, Nintendo, Doc Trey, still holding it down, still make the best games, and you know this, bro, it's the truth. If you don't like it, you can have that seat All right, so as you guys know, Unreal Engine 5 has been having sort of a tough time running great on the Nintendo Switch 2, well, along with every other system. Um, there's been some issues with Unreal Engine 5 when it comes to performance. And I found this write-up from what appears to be like a, it's a developer, but I believe they're like kind of like a support studio. One of those uh, smaller studios that help the bigger developers bring games to um, their systems and port games to their systems. And I thought that this was a very interesting write-up. So this is called From One Build to Two Experiences. An Unreal Engine 5 porting playbook for the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, this is from Walla Walla Studio. And it says, If your Unreal Engine 5 game almost holds 60 on TV but jitters and feels great in handheld, you're not alone. The Switch 2 asks you to ship two equally polished experiences, not one build stretch across two contexts. Here's how to frame the port around that reality and hit a smooth launch. Define the real problem. Two modes, two promises. On Switch 2, handheld and docked are not just output options. They're different player expectations. Player has a 1080p HDR VRR capable display up to 120 frames per second. Great for smoothing small frame time bumps. Dock mode outputs at up to 4K 60 frames over HDMI, but VRR isn't supported in TV mode. So micro stutters are far more visible. Treating both modes as one target is the number one way, otherwise uh, solid ports feel inconsistent. The fix, build two first class performance profiles from day one. Recommended targets you can rally the team behind. In handheld mode, uh, go for 60 frames per second, VRR friendly, render at 720p to 900p internally upscale to 1080p with dlss where it helps keep post effects conservative and guard one percent lows vrr hides the rest in dock mode for either 60 frames per second fix or um dock mode 30 frames per second for fidelity mode there is no vrr safety net on tv so favor um <laughs> Dieter Minimistic. I can't speak today. Frame pacing and predictable spikes. If your head, if you need headroom for showpiece effects, ship a Doc Thirty high preset um, players can choose. It says pick the right upscaler early and test it like a feature. Nintendo Switch 2's custom NVIDIA processor supports DLSS and hardware ray tracing. That means you can protect image quality at modest internal resolutions, especially in dock 4K output, without paying native pixel costs. Keep TSR as a uh, baseline fallback platform uh, agnostic, uh, easy to reason about, sometimes better for the thin line UI. A and B them at art reviews, just not in engineering tests. Practical tip. Build a single map with foliage, alpha rain particles, and specular highlights. Swap DLSS quality modes and TSR in one button press and record UI readability deltas, not just FPS. Lighting and, and geometry, a pragmatic, pragmatic Unreal Engine 5 mix that won't bite you late. Lumen, treat lumen as a dial, not a switch. A reliable pattern on constrained hardware is baked GI for most scenes. Keep hybrid lumen for interiors, hero moments, or tight capped reflections. Validate the worst 10 section, section, ah, validate the worst 10 seconds of your game where GI reflections and effects collide before you commit. For nanite, use nanite aggressively for static environment, rock, architecture, big props. Be selective with skeletal meshes, meshes heavy uh, WPO and mass materials. They're supported with cavites and can cost more than you can expect. 
let art leads know early which assets will remain non-nanite. Shadows, virtual shadow maps, pair beautifully with nanite but come with a page cash, cash budget you must watch. Track allocated clear cash uh, pages and avoid invalidation storms from many small overlapping dynamic lights. If memory spikes in outdoor scenes, put the sun back on cascades and keep VSM for local hero lights. Memory IO and packaging design the storage the platform actually uses. Switch to ships with 256 gigs of UF UFS internal storage and only accepts micro SD express for game storage. Streamers that felt fine on PC can stutter here if you don't chunk content and prefetch aggressively. Split optional 4K HD packs for dock where it makes sense. Keep the base install lean and profile scene transition IO on both internal and micro SD express. In input and social uh, UX. Don't ship blind on new affordances. The new Joy-Con 2 add a C button and mouse sensor. Switch 2 also integrates. And that's just about the uh, controller support. It's not what I want to read. Okay. So a 6 to 10 week port plan that actually de-risks your, your launch. Weeks 1 to 2, lock the two experiences. Upgrade to Unreal Engine 5.6. Define handheld at 60 frames per second, VRR friendly, and docked 60 frames fix, and or uh, docked 30 frames for fidelity. Presets with scalability and upscaler choices baked in. Build a reproductible stress scene and wire hot swap between uh, DLSS, TSR for qualitative uh, reviews. Week three to four, decide lighting and shadows convert the world. Choose baked versus hybrid lumen. Set VSM page budgets and cap dynamic light uh, radii overlap. Convert priority environments to uh, sets to nanite. Document exceptions. Okay, weeks five to six, IO and UX realities. Validate install patch um, stream flows on Uf UFS and micro SD express. Run game track uh, soak test voice plus screen share plus camera during heavy scenes. Test mouse mode affordances while relevant. Week seven to 10, pacing polish certification prep. On TV, lock frame pacing, no VR. In handheld, verify VRR smooths minor dips without hiding uh, systemic spikes. Finally, readability passes for HDR, subtitle contrast, thin uh, UI in both modes. Says the checklist that keeps everyone honest. Two performance profiles ship ready. Handheld 60 VRR friendly, dock 60 fix, or dock 30 fidelity mode. Upscaling chosen per scene. DLS where it wins, especially in dot TSR as a clean fallback. UI that doesn't shimmer. Lighting. Baked baseline hybrid lumen only where it pays off. Reflections ranges capped. Shadows. VSM page stats within limits. Deep dynamic lap light overlap small. Use CSM for the sun if needed. For nanite. Environment first, exceptions for a skeletal heavy WPO mass are documented. For I.O., internal UFS plus micro SD express flows tested. No blocking loads on camera cuts and fast travel. And for social input, game chat plus mouse mode validated C button shortcuts don't conflict with core actions. It says why this approach works. It aligns your team with experience goals rather than a moving average uh, frames per second. It also respects what the hardware actually provides. DLSS to buy clarity at same internal resolutions. VRR in handheld mode only. No VRR on TV, so frame pacing must be deliberate. Micro SD Express that rewards tidy streaming and new input social features that can make your port feel native instead of brought over. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm.
Mm. I know some of these words. 